the meeting's on your calendar and you know you need to go and you're wondering how to network successfully at business events. Hi, my name is Tiffany Kellogg and I am the author of The Four and a Half Networking Mistakes where we take a look at all of the things uh, that the experts tell you to do in networking that maybe you shouldn't as well as explore the 19 networking nuggets, what to do before, during, and after a networking event, plus how to deal with networking nerves. I'm excited today to be able to explore networking and how to do it successfully. We'll cover topics including why networking is important, Tiffany's top networking tips, and how to network successfully at business events. At any point in time, if you want to skip ahead to one of those conversations, feel free in the description below. You can click on the timestamp and it will take you right there. So let's dive in. Let's talk about networking. So when it comes to networking, why is networking important? I, I think we want to start with what is networking? Because a lot of times I think people think networking, I'm going to go to these events. I'm going to meet people, pass out a bunch of business cards, and hopefully they'll want to give me some money. Ascentive defines networking as the process of developing and activating your contacts to increase your business, enhance your knowledge, and expand your sphere of influence. So networking is definitely a lot more than just let me meet some folks, pass out some business cards, and try to sell. It's about developing those relationships, meeting the right people. Now, here's an interesting thing. When I ask entrepreneurs, most of them share, yeah, hey, I go to networking events. My goal is I want to get a couple new clients. When you ask the very same group of people, hey, so are you going to networking events to buy stuff? They're like, what are you talking about, Tiffany? <laughs> we call that the networking disconnect. If you're going to sell, but nobody's going to buy, uh, it's not quite the same thing. It gets a little awkward. And that's why a lot of people don't like going to networking events because they feel like they're being sold too. And so you have to have a, a mindset shift of, I'm not going to this networking event necessarily to get new clients. It's I'm going to this networking event my goal is to book a meeting from the meeting. I want to meet the right people in the networking event to see who else could I connect with? Who else are the people that I'd like to be able to work with from here? And I book a meeting from that initial meeting with them. Now let's take a look at how to network. Number three from the four and a half networking mistakes talks about when you go to a networking event, you're going to want to create a goal. When it comes to creating a goal, uh, if, our, if our intention is not to get new clients, I do think it's okay for us to have a goal of how many potential prospects that we met would we like to speak with. We could also have a goal of how many potential referral sources we meet. To me, that's when I go to a networking event, usually I'm looking for prospects and referral sources. Now, not all referral sources are created equally. I know sometimes people think, well, anybody can be passing me referrals. True, though, those contact sphere relationships, so contact sphere non-competing industry with the same target market, they are the best of the referral sources because they deal with your ideal clients all the time. So when I'm going to a networking event, I am more excited when I meet a potential contact sphere relationship than I am even when I meet the, the prospect. Now, if you're not sure who those right referral relationships are, uh, I do have a program called More Referrals, Five Steps to Referral Success. It is free online. The link is in the description below. And one of the five steps actually gets into this best referral source. And there's a little exercise to help you figure out what are the right professions for you. So check that out. It's free. Uh, love to have you joining us. One of my favorite ways to network the room, uh, we could call this Tiffany's Top Networking Tip, is going to be utilizing your funneling conversation. In 60 seconds or less, are you a great client for me? Are you a great referral source for me or not? So what is the funneling conversation? Uh, this is the Cliff Notes version. I have a full video that gets really in depth, shares examples, lots of stuff. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. But here's kind of the, the Cliff Notes version. When you first meet somebody, typically after you exchange names, one of the first things you'll ask is what do you do? When they give you the profession, uh, you should be thinking in your head, okay, are they an amazing referral source for me or not? Uh, and so that's why you need to know if it's the, the right source. And if they are, great. Uh, then what you're going to do is schedule a meeting with them. <laughs> hey, you know, oh my gosh, you're a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker. That is amazing. I actually find that I have a ton of referral business that I could potentially pass to you. Um, do you think we could get together for a coffee 
uh, a quick meeting, a Zoom, and I can learn a little bit more about your business. Most people with the ooh, potential of referrals are, are quick to say yes. Now, if the profession in your head, you're thinking, are they in my contact sphere? And the answer is no, then this could be hard for some of you. We want to keep our mouths shut and we want to wait for the person, hopefully to ask back, well, what is it that you do? If they don't ask, they're not interested and that's okay. Uh, politely move away. That's one of the other networking nuggets. Exit the conversation gracefully. Um, but you don't have to leave right that second, but they're letting you know they're not interested if they're not asking you questions back. So when they do ask, hopefully, what do you do? You want to respond not with your profession, but with your I help statement. I help my clients. So when I'm networking, I say I help my clients make money, save time and have fun. The hope is they're going to ask, well, what is that about? How do you do that? They're again engaging. So what I love about the funneling conversation, instead of you spewing all over or verbally vomited, let me tell you what I do. This gives us the opportunity to be really focused and, and, and people are feel like they're engaged because you're asking them questions. They're answering. Um, then they're asking you questions. You're answering. So they have perceived control of the conversation. And it's a conversation, not just a, a pitch. Uh, I'm not a fan of the elevator pitch. I like the conversation much better. When they ask you how you do that, then it gives you the opportunity to ask a series of two or four questions to say, are you a good prospect for me or no? So my first question is, are you looking to grow your business? Because if somebody says, no, they're not looking to grow their business, they're not a good fit for me. Then I'll ask, do you like referrals to grow your business? And if they, again, they say, no, not a good fit for me. And that's okay. I'm okay with, I, I don't want to walk out of a networking event with 50 cards for people to follow up with. I want to walk out of a networking event with the appointments already set for the right people. Uh, it saves me on my follow-up, but I'll talk more about follow-up in a moment. As I go through my questions, if at any point in time I get a no to the questions that I'm asking, it kicks them out of the funnel and I know they're not a good fit for me. If I get a yes, yes, yes to my questions, then I'm going to ask them, hey, can we set up a, a follow-up appointment? Because, you know, I think I can help you because we can help you double or triple your referrals. You said that'd be of interest to you. Can we sit down and have a chat and I can share more? And so you're actually qualifying the prospect right then and there. And it makes life so much easier. Now, there's a bonus way that you can use the funneling conversation, actually getting your referral sources to use it on your half when they're generating referrals. Again, check out my full length video on funneling conversations over uh, on my YouTube channel. Two other networking nuggets that I think will help us when we go networking. The first, number 13, spend five minutes or less with the people that you meet. So my goal is I want to have the conversation, see if you're the right fit for me. If the answer is yes, yay, let me schedule the meeting. If the answer is no, then let me move on. Uh, the last thing I want to do is spend 60 minutes talking to one person at a networking event. I think of networking almost kind of like speed net, speed dating. I want to meet everybody or meet quite a few people to see who's going to be good fits for me, not spend all my time with one person. We want to kind of see who's good to see who we want that second date or that, that follow-up meeting with. Number 15 from the, the four and a half networking mistakes is avoid spending time with people you already know. Now, I'm not going to say that you can't take a few minutes to catch up. Hey, how's it going? What's happening in your business? Here's what's happening in mine. I think that's fine. However, I've seen plenty of people at networking events that they come in, they're like, oh, I know her. And they spend the entire time at the table chit-chatting between the two of them. And you hear them walking out the door like, oh, I didn't meet anybody new. Well, yeah, because you spend all your time talking to somebody that you already knew. So really make the most of your time. Use a funneling conversation. In less than 60 seconds, you'll know if they're a good prospect or a referral source. Spend less than five minutes with the new people that you meet and avoid spending time with people that you already know. Another one of my favorite ways to successfully network at business events is a tactic that I like to call tag team networking. It is networking nugget number five from the four and a half networking mistakes. And essentially what you're going to do is you come up with a partner to go tag team networking with you. Now, when you're meeting somebody, when they ask what you do, you're actually not going to say anything and your partner is going to share what you do. And when somebody asks what your partner does, you get to respond. Here's the thing. This happens naturally. We're just creating an intention and doing it on purpose. And so for that, there is three parts to what we're going to be sharing on the other person's behalf. The first is their name. <laughs> Hopefully that's pretty easy their I help statement, 
and then a very short success story. Now, if the person happens to be a client of yours and vice versa, and you can give a personal testimony, that is always important. If they're not, then you want to share. And so before I go tag team networking with somebody, I actually want to come up with a strategy. And so I'm going to sit down with them and say, hey, what's, what do you want me to say on your behalf? What do, you, what do I say on your behalf? And so if I was having somebody introduce me, I might be like, oh, let me introduce you to Tiffany Kellogg. She helps entrepreneurs make money, save time, and have fun. Uh, she has a photographer client who in the past year has been able to grow his business by 8% while reducing his work week by 25% so he can spend more time with his kids. It is important when we're tag team networking that it's short. This is a, a couple sentences, not a paragraph or two or a page or two. The hope is people will say, well, how do you do that? If your referral source is on top of their game, then they could use the funneling conversation on your behalf. If they're not quite to that skill level yet, then you can jump in and use your funneling conversation to see if the person will be a good fit for you or not. So when we talk about how to network successfully at events, I think there's also the importance of how do I follow up from a networking event? And that's going to be our last two networking nuggets from the four and a half networking mistakes that we're going to explore today. Networking nugget number 18 is follow up. So what is the best way to follow up from a networking event? I actually have three different answers to that question in the full length video that you can check out where we get into detail. Though I will say one way to stand out from others, that handwritten note is a very powerful way. Again, I'll put the link in the description below on the video that gets way more in depth on what's the best way to follow up. And then networking nugget number 19 from the four and a half networking mistakes is connect online to strengthen those offline relationships. So whether you met somebody, so maybe we should change offline to uh, at a live event. So whether I was networking on Zoom or in person, uh, but I want to connect with them via social media because it gives me the opportunity to build that know, like, and trust or that visibility by being in front of them. Now, my kind of rule of thumb on that is I feel I can approach anybody on LinkedIn and ask for the connection. I feel like it's a business network. So it's cool. When it comes to Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all of those, I only usually connect with them if it's on their business card, it's on their website, or it's in their email signature. So I'm more than happy to connect with people if they say connect in those areas, because not everybody is using Facebook or Pinterest or Twitter for business purposes. So we want to make sure that we keep it in the business realm when possible. So only connect with them if they've advertise, hey, connect with me here. Hopefully now you have some great ideas on how to network successfully at business events. What are some of your thoughts? What did I miss? What do you want to see me cover in another video? Because I could talk for hours and hours and hours and hours about networking. I actually do. It's called Incentives Ignite Your Business Program, where it's actually 25 hours all about how to grow your business by referral. So there's tons there. Uh, if you have other thoughts, please leave them in the comments below. While you're down there, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for other tips on how to help you make money, save time, and have fun. Happy networking, y'all.